Hello, how are you? I'm Dandy, and how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. What's well, the important thing when it comes to renovations, as far as I'm concerned, are kitchens and bathrooms, right? And you are the manager of the kitchen and bathroom department? Yes, I am. Can you give us any hints? What's going on in the world of kitchens and bathrooms these days if somebody wants to have a renovation done? A lot of people who are doing the reno for themselves as opposed to renovating to flip, they're really focusing on making the interiors of the cabinets functional. So accessories for pots and pans and tray dividers and special cutlery inserts and spice steps and things like that where uh, there's a lot of focus on making sure that what goes in goes where it makes sense and to make sure that we're maximizing the space within the cabinet. Storage these days is a very important thing as well. And I noticed from the new cabinets, from the new designers out there, uh, you have drawers now that slide out. You can put your uh, spices in there and you have another drawer that slides out and you can put stuff in there. So storage is really, really, really coming to the forefront. It is, yes. Yeah, it's it's intelligent design as opposed to just slapping in any old kitchen where we're taking our time to figure out how to best utilize the space and to make it the most functional it can be. Now, if somebody is thinking about doing a small renovation on the kitchen to get some more out of their investment, where could they start? What could they do? Doing cabinets, it's a costly renovation in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it's more than just paint and and flooring, right? Right. To do new cabinets, they're really going to get a a good bang for their buck, and they're going to get a good 20 to 30 years out of those cabinets. So it does seem like a big investment up front, but uh, once it's in and they get to live with it, they love it, and it's just a, a great place start. A lot of our, our renovations that we actually do usually start with somebody coming in saying, I want a new kitchen, and it goes from there. They end up attacking on a whole bunch of other details and elements to their project. What about floor right now? The kitchen is an area that can be, let's put it this way and be kind, moist sometimes. Yes. Sometimes people spill things. What would you suggest for, for a good flooring product? I have seen it where we've done hardwood or laminate, but your dishwasher goes, your fridge line goes, Something happens and then you pretty much are looking at replacing all of your flooring throughout, whereas tile is so resilient and not so susceptible to water damage and things like that. It's sort of a longer lasting thing. But we do have a lot of clients who are concerned about the temperature and the hardness of tile. Right. So oftentimes we'll put in floor heat underneath to keep it a little bit more cozy. you got to love that radiant in-floor heating. We have that at our place and good Lord, I just love it. All right, let's switch our attention to, if you pardon me, the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> What's going on in there? No, I don't answer that question, but you know what <laughs> you know what I mean. With bathrooms, we're seeing a lot of trend towards vanities mounted off the floor, so they don't go all the way down. They're sort of floating. Mm-hmm. Especially in a small space, it creates the feeling of more space than what you actually have. We're doing a lot of lighting underneath the vanities as sort of a nightlight application. So in the middle of the night, you wake up and you need to use the facilities. You don't have to turn on all the lights and blind yourself. You can have just a, a sort of a light glow coming from underneath your vanity to, to act as a nightlight. We're doing a lot of that as well. I'm glad you touched on lighting because I know there are a lot of women who listen to the show who say they go into the bathroom to apply their makeup and the lighting is all wrong. For some yeah. reason, under a certain kind of light, you seem to have more wrinkles. I, 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 I don't <laughs> quite understand that, but maybe you could share well, some light on that. The most appropriate lighting for bathroom for makeup application is actually to do wall-mounted sconces on either side of the mirror. You want them mounted at about 66 inches from the floor, roughly, mm-hmm. and that way you're, you're getting a, a full spectrum of light on your face. As opposed to the lights that you see mounted over the mirror, what you get then is downlighting, and you, oftentimes your nose will cast a shadow on the lower half of your face, and it actually, it's not as effective. And also paint colors comes into play when it comes to lighting application, because in the space, the color of the wall actually does show and reflect on your skin when you're doing application of, of makeup, so... Things like a, a light blue or a green might tend to make you look a little bit more sickly than if you had the yellow walls or red walls or, or a warmer color. Well, you know, I have the female members of my family all taking notes right now. And one of the things I think when I get home is what I'm going to do is remove the lights we have in our bathroom. Because do you remember those old uh, uh, aircraft searchlights they used to have? That, sh- <laughs> that You know the ones I mean? That, yep. that shone up into the sky? Yes. Well, we have a couple of those in our bathroom. I think it's time for them to come out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be a good idea. Thanks very much. Talk to you again soon. Okay, have a great day.